Guys, I finally did it. The biggest telescope I have ever used to see objects in the night sky like never before through the eyepiece. I may take a picture or two through it, but that's not what it's for. I've got my list of deep sky objects I wanna see for the first time, and we are lugging this thing to a star party. This is a 14 inch Dobsonian telescope, and I can't wait to see what it can do. When I'm here in the backyard, I use compact refractor telescopes almost exclusively. It's not that I'm against using a big reflector telescope, it's that for astrophotography, you don't really need a huge aperture to take great pictures. However, this week we're headed to a star party, a place that is so dark that the planet Venus actually can cast a shadow. If you're lucky enough to ever be under a sky like this, you want aperture. You want the absolute biggest telescope possible to see deeper and fainter objects than ever before. In the telescope world, the wider the aperture, the more light you can collect. And this bad boy is over a foot wide. This is a Skywatcher 14 inch SynScan Dobsonian telescope, a computerized go-to visual scope. It has a focal length of 1650 millimeters and a focal ratio of f4.6. It's collapsible, it has Wi-Fi control, and it's massive. I couldn't believe the size of the base when we took it out of the box for the first time. It's scary big. It arrived on a skid in the driveway last week and I can only imagine what my neighbors thought we were receiving. Kevin at Skywatcher assured us that the 14 inch model is actually easier to transport than the 12 because the rocker box base comes apart on this one. But I now realize he may have tricked us into taking the biggest telescope we've ever used. The Skywatcher guys will be in Canada this summer for a star party and it was easier for us to lug this big daub over there than it was for them to ship it there. So it's a win-win unless I break something on it before then. So for anyone going to the Cherry Spring Star Party party in Pennsylvania, we leave tomorrow, and Starfest in Ontario, Canada in August, you'll get to see this daub in action twice this summer. Okay, here's a little unboxing time lapse of this scope and us setting it up for the first time. If you're new to astronomy, a Dobsonian reflector is probably the best first telescope you can own. They offer the biggest bang for your buck in terms of aperture, with the 8-inch model probably being the most practical choice. A Dob uses a big primary mirror at the base to collect light, and they're easier to maneuver on a rocker box than, say, a rickety old Altaz tripod mount. I've used a number of medium-sized daubs in the past, and the latest one before this one used something called the StarSense smartphone system. That was a great option for anyone that wanted to add some tech to the visual observing experience to find objects, but it's not for everyone. Similarly, this SynScan daub from Skywatcher removes some of the exploration aspect of the visual experience and includes a computer database of over 40,000 objects. That's right, you can just pick an object, a star, a galaxy, a nebula, whatever you want, and this go-to Dobsonian telescope will slew to it for you. I've mixed feelings about this because I started my personal journey by manually finding objects in space myself with my telescope and that was half the fun. This particular daub has dual encoders, so it allows you to release the clutch, move the telescope around freely, manually, without losing your go-to alignment. It's a feature called Freedom Find, and I'm not sure I'll actually use it tonight, 
but it's a nice option. With that being said, I'm looking forward to seeing just how many deep sky objects I can cross off my list using this GoTo daub tonight. Because of the computerized GoTo SynScan system, this telescope needs power. So it has a DC port and I'll use my portable power bank to power it for the night. So I use the Anchor 757 powerhouse and I'll just leave it right next to the scope here and it should be enough to power it all night tonight and tomorrow night if we happen to stay another night. So I brought two eyepieces with me to use with this telescope. This one's a nice wide angle Celestron 23 millimeter, 82 degree field of view eyepiece. This is the one I'll use most. Uh, and then I also brought this Pentax 10 millimeter eyepiece for close-ups. This is the one I'll use for planets and stuff. So to kind of find out where I am in the sky, I'll use the wide field eyepiece. When I have my target centered, I'll put in the high powered eyepiece. I'm excited to see what Venus and Mars look like this evening through this telescope. And maybe if I'm up late enough, Jupiter first thing in the morning. back at home now and I have some thoughts. If you're looking to get into the daub world, honestly, anything over eight inches is a big commitment. The optical tube itself is long and cumbersome, yes, but it's that rocker box base that you really need to think about. Thankfully, the base for the Flex Tube 350P comes apart so it makes it easier to transport because once it's put together, it's a two-man job just to move it around. The go-to sin scan system on this Skywatcher daub actually works. It kind of sounds like it's struggling when it's in use, but yeah, you can actually completely control this Dobsonian telescope with your phone. It uses the same SynScan app I already had on my phone from the Star Adventure GTI, and it magically slewed pretty close to that first alignment star on the very first try. Even though this telescope can track objects, it's primarily a visual telescope. A big one like this may be worth the effort if deep views through the eyepiece are important to you. Me? Well, as you know, I lean more to astrophotography than I do for visual observing. I appreciate good optics and an nice eyepiece, but I just can't kick the idea of attaching a camera to it. Because this particular daub has tracking and go-to, I actually can take pictures of solar system objects using my planetary camera. For this type of astrophotography, you only need to take relatively short videos through the scope while it's tracking. Because this telescope has a big 14-inch mirror and a focal ratio of f4.6, I should be able to take some of my most detailed lunar and planetary shots yet with this scope. It's an Altaz mount, but I just need it to follow the planet for about 60 seconds to collect thousands of frames. I know that others are using this exact same telescope for this purpose and are getting amazing results. The plan is to use the ASI Air in video mode, which should be fun for both imaging and EAA style observing. So I will be using this FlexTube 350P for solar system imaging this summer. And as always, I'll be taking you guys along for the ride. I hope you enjoyed the video and learned a little bit more about what it's like to use a Dobsonian telescope and the experience 
especially the FlexTube 350P. Until next time, keep shooting, keep sharing, and don't forget to look up once in a while. Clear skies.